What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing on this amazing Thursday night? Good? Good. Great. All right. I'm happy to see you all here again. We appreciate you for always showing up on this call. Again, my name is Lizelle, and I am the Customer Service and Sales Manager here with Highland Park Lapidary. And I wanted to officially welcome you to our 16th live interactive webinar. Oh, my God. And we wanted to say hello and thank you as well to all our customers and followers that are streaming with us live, both on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Thank you for always tuning in with us. So before we proceed, I wanted to acknowledge our audience here in Zoom tonight who always make some time to be with us. Welcome and thank you. And for, for all our newcomers, please put new in the chat and we wanted to welcome you. And you can also put your name and where you are calling from. Hey, Ron, welcome. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. Yes. Okay. Anybody? Do we have from somebody from Texas? Yes. Hello from Oregon. Hi, John Marshall. Hi. North Minnesota in the house. Welcome. First time, Sian, I think. British Columbia, yes. nice. Yeah. It's going to snow. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. And um, give them some Highland Park love by welcoming them, guys. Thank you so much. Again, this is the place where we share our knowledge, ask our questions, and get tips and tricks all about the lapidary art and you know, what we are doing here is super, super valuable. Do you agree? Yes? Yep. Thank you. So we're very grateful to all of you for all the positive feedback and five-star reviews you have given to us. We are very committed to continue this avenue where we share education and information to everyone. And please note that our service to you does not end the moment your package leaves our door. That's where it starts. You know, we're not perfect and things can happen beyond our control, but we can guarantee to you that our relationship will last for a long time, just like our machines. So we're going to be with you, okay? Okay. And for tonight's call, we are honored to have Bart Nelson as our guest speaker, along with John and Sherman. So tonight is all about the acrylic glass and rock polishing. So this is going to be super interactive. And for Q&A later, you can raise your hand if you have any questions by going into our reaction icon at the bottom of your Zoom and click raise hand. Or you can also post your questions in the chat. So we encourage everybody to participate and make it as interactive as possible. So I know you are all excited. This is going to be never been done before session on glass and rock polishing. So let's kick off today's webinar with our intro video.
All right. It's great to see you, Bart. Hello. I'm glad guys, to be here. You're going to love glad what you're here. Bart Hey, dude, uh, Bart, so Bart sent us some pictures and we, I thought one of the contexts we could do to start this off is why don't we actually show people that reel of some of your work? Because that gives kind of a picture of where we're going. And I think it's going to help them then understand the steps that you're going to go through by seeing the finished product. Um, does that does sound good to you guys? Because I mean, I, we had it for, before, but I yeah. think it's really good. You know how hey. you know how I I found Bart is I I was on uh, either Lapidary Lapidary Equipment Marketplace Group and and I I watch those feeds all the time because there's all kinds of interesting stuff that gets posted and people have questions or people need help um, and I've been seeing Bart stuff pop up there and it just keeps getting better and better and better and I saw. It was one of his last posts a couple of weeks ago, and I and I messaged the team. I'm like, we got to get this guy on a webinar because what he's doing is really, really great. So yeah, I think that's a great place to start to show people what Bart's making. All right, Joe, can you roll that? Those are crazy cool. Like I've always seen this stuff and I'm like, how do they do it? And now we have you here, which is cool. Um, so, um, you know, Bart, you put a bunch of videos together and I you've kind of stepped us through the videos. I mean, Bart kind of, for, for all of you, he knocked it out of the bar park, kind of like what Erica did on the, on the silversmithing. Uh, he's got a lot of content. There's no way we're going to get through it in one setting. Um, but we, you started really with the beginning, kind of talking about your process um, and tools. Um, how, why don't you tell us a little bit about how long you've been doing lapidary? How did you get into doing uh, the glass work? And is some of also the, because I know you've had some mentors, uh, people have also guided you along the way. Well, I started, I've been a uh, rock hound all my life, but never started cutting and polishing anything until I was about, well, I, I bought a friend's cab machine from him about, oh, it's been three and a half years ago. So I haven't done any cutting or polishing other than I did take a silversmithing class in high school. So I had a taste and that got me lit, but I never did pursue that at all. So anyway, I got into uh, rock polishing and as I was polishing rocks and having fun doing that, um, I decided that uh, I, I saw a video of Jack Storms, who is a, a glass artist, sculptor extraordinaire. He's awesome. And I got it. I, I started researching YouTube, whatever I could find about how he was doing his work. And I noticed that he had some big flat laps that were uh, some pretty big machines and and I thought, oh, I got to get me a flat lap. I'm doing this stuff without doing any flat lap. And so, and I started researching diacoric glass and I, uh, I did some cabs, some, I did a moss agate cab with a piece of diacro glass that I got a, from a friend of mine. And I just attached that on the back of the cab. So I just backed it, it made a backing out of that. And it made a really cool effect with that uh, diacro glass on the back and uh, I started started getting the bug even more and more about doing that. And so I contacted another, well, I, I found a guy on, um, on, on Instagram, it's the Dicoric Glass Man. His name is Steven uh, Makuzniak. And I'm, I probably butchered his last name, but he, he'll let me know. But anyway, I, I contacted him and he set me up with some glass. He, he, I bought a kit from him 
and it was just some sheets of glass and some, he gave me some float glass and, and he had some videos that kind of did a little bit of tutorials about gluing the glass together and, and um, doing a basic cube, building a basic cube. And, and you take that cube and you start cutting it and you uh, put that cube into pieces and, and you add more glass and you cut it and add more glass and it becomes really beautiful. And so I started getting a little bit trial and error. Uh, you just, I built quite a few pieces and just, and then I thought, you know, I've never seen anybody do this with stone and I was cutting it. And when I cut a, a slab off of a cube, I thought, God, oh, that would be kind of cool if I mixed it with a stone. And so that's what I did. I mixed that cab with a stone and I posted that in my very first piece. It just got a ton of excitement. People commented like crazy about it. And and I thought, you know, it, and it, it was the first piece of me, I call it fusion, where you blending the glass and stone together, together to make one item. And, and that really is what I've started to do in love. And so I've been doing that and incorporating glass with cubes and, and doing other things, trying to get as good as Jack Storms, which I'll never be as good, but you know, it's fun to think and, and to look up to somebody that does an awesome job. So that's how I kind now of got he's into also, it. You, you know, Jack, you've built, I, I think you kind of well, you've talked I, to him or chat, I've, like I've had DMs. conversations just over some, uh, over the, over some live streams that he's done mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. That's, I have, I don't really know him personally. No. Yeah. So. No, he's a cool dude. He's bought stuff from us and he does amazing work. Definitely like over the top brilliant your work is really really amazing. so Bart. Uh, yes did i hear you say you've been you've been cutting stone for three and a half years now i have that's it so well you know i think that's really important for people to hear because some people think you can't build the skill unless you're doing it for 20 years or something but uh i think with particularly with the the information and the tools that are available today people can learn and, and progress so much faster and obviously you've put a lot of effort and a lot of time into this in that three and a half years but the fact that you've accomplished what you've accomplished in that period of time is really pretty impressive well thank you i uh, it, it you know it's fun um it's therapeutic for me to to come up into the the shop and and spend some time and just and i get ideas every time i finish a project i get another idea oh this would be cool if i did this or you know it's just it's unbelievably fun to me to do i i absolutely love it yeah yeah well That's your great. work is yeah. beautiful and, so, and, and because i love it i want i would love to share that passion that i have with everybody else yeah yeah well, you, this is definitely where we want to do it. Like, hopefully, many of you online here, you're going to look at what Bart's doing. And you're like, I can do that. I want to do that. We're going to go through the step by step how to do that. Now, you and John have been talking for a while, too, because I think, John, you saw his work. And I guess you guys were riffing on some of the changes that we did on the flat laps. Yeah, well, Bart was telling yeah. me I need to make it variable speed. Yeah. <laughs> Which did. Was, it was a little bit of a challenge to figure out how to do it and not have it uh make it stupid expensive or and, and be you know highland park reliable but we've we've gotten there so now yes. all of our laps i won't even make a fixed speed lap anymore everything's variable speed it's, yeah. it's the best it's you can't do it without having a variable bar variable speed especially when you get to polishing on your uh felt pad and you have to have that slower speed so you're not throwing the cerium off cerium's expensive and and you don't want to waste it and, and get rid of it. So you just, that variable speed makes it so nice. And then you can turn it up when you're grinding away to, you know, hog something off really quick and, and you can uh, use it to just, like I say, it's nice to have the control. Yeah. 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 Well, why don't we start with the first video, which is really kind of this setup that you've talked about. You're talking a little bit of process and then we'll get into this each steps. Uh, Joe, can you run that first video? Hello, I'm Bart Nelson. Um, I'm going to be showing a few tips using the Highland Park 24 inch flat lap. Um, 
some of these um, things I'm doing are just things that I've kind of picked up on learning. I, uh, I specialize in doing uh, stone and dichroic glass, dichro glass um, together um, and also doing some glass sculptures. Um, I'll show you a few setups that I've got going and uh, to start off with a 24 inch flat lap right here. Um, just a, a, a tip before you start putting on your discs, um, always take and run your hand over the top. Make sure that there's nothing on top of it. Another thing that I do, and this is what I do also, is take a little WD-40 every time that I, um, when I'm done with for the day working on the machine, um, I always take and, and we'll sp spray a little bit of WD-40 on the machine and then wipe it down with a good WD-40 soaked rag and that'll leave it prepped for you for the next time that you're ready to go. And it's just nice and clean that way. So I'm gonna start off cutting um, some of my glass cubes that I've been working on, uh, glass sculptures. I've got dichro uh, inside these glass, dichro layers inside the glass. And then um, each step I do, I cut and polish uh, a flat surface, then add more glass um, to come up with my finished product. So I'll get started on cutting these ones down with my um, 325 grit nickel plated lap and so i'll load that on right now good trick to uh getting these things centered on your hub is get really close and then drop it like that then you can spin it and see i've got to move it just a little bit That's pretty good and centered on my on my pin. So start my water. Got my little switch and turn my pump on. Um, and why don't you go just roll straight to that next video, Joe? And what's really nice about the Highland Park is the variable speed. Dialed in a little better. And we'll up the speed on this. So you just turn the, I'll show you later the controls on this. A little too much water still. Turn the speed up some more. Now it's kind of squeaked until they get warmed up. So I'm going to start with this piece here. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grind this side and this side. This side's this side I'll do later, but I'm going to grind up this side and get it down to where I need it. When you're starting out doing this, you're going to lose a piece. It's going to hit, catch on you, it's going to swing and slam into the side of the machine, and you'll break them, but that's part of the, the curve. But anyway, this start here, working this glass down. Always keep a good hand hold on and keep checking and getting close to, to 
to match in my existing cut here. Let me zoom this in a little bit. If I can. I can't zoom it. So I can see I'm starting to get cut into my glass. I don't want to take too much. I just want to get just the right amount. Of course, all the way across. If you look inside, you can actually see inside here that it's coming across as I go. Closer to having it all the way to the point that I need to have it now put on, on the other side. A little bit more. Got to get a little bit more water on here. There we go. So what I'm checking is to making sure that I've got it cut all the way across, which I do, and there's no, it's all flat, so checked it all out, my light a little closer, I don't know if that's going to get my there, now I'm ready to start on this side, I've got the grind that side a little more than everything else, so let's kind of fold up that side, just so it grinds even. best way to keep it from grabbing and catching is to hold the, the block on the side that the wheel's pulling from. And that's the safest way to keep from doing it. When you get into the finishing stages, I'm not so much concerned about it right now, but you get into the finishing stages and you want to um, definitely hold it on. You don't want to spend, waste all the time you've spent. And I can see through my glass window here that I'm starting to cut into my polished glass on the other side, which is good. I'm just going to watch the whole thing. I can see it from this side inside the glass too. You can kind of see, it's getting closer, getting closer right here. You can see I got a corner here that has to be worn off. Pretty good. Nope, we've still got this edge here to go ahead and grind out some more. So. I may grind off a little bit of this just to make it a little simpler. I'm not going to grind all the way down. I'm just grinding the, 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 the two pieces of glass that I've added on to the end of my piece here. I'm just grinding those down a little bit. I gotta grind these off. I'd want to I don't want to grind this section as much. See it grabbing. I've got, a, I've got a good hold, and it, it grabs because I push too hard. You know, you can also let the machine do the work. Just do it light, nice and light. 
Okay, that's it on this piece. I'll uh, shut the video off and grind my a couple more pieces and then I'll uh, show you about changing the discs and and going with the next discs. So, so was that three, you said that was 325 bar? That was 325 grit, yep. So what's your grit sequence when you when you go on to that from like- so what you've so I a lot of times too, and that, and and I didn't show that on the, all of them, but sometimes I even will will take off that excess glass on a cab machine just because it it goes a little quicker for me to cut it off on the cab machine. But I start mm -hmm. out with three twenty five nickel plated lap, then I go to a uh, three hundred or five hundred grit nickel plated, and then mm -hmm. my polishing st stages go with a resin. A resin lap, and that starts out at two twenty six hundred, and then up to twelve hundred. And then the final polish is done with your your synthetic felt lap, right? And cerium and oxide, cerium oxide, yep, yep, yep. No, that's that's good. Now that the, some people are asking about that pitch on the thing, so I was noticing with a camera because I have a, a VFDA, you do have a little bit of that pitch, but that camera is picking up a whole lot of that high frequency harmonic there. And yeah, I was listening to that, and I'm like, it's not nearly that loud when you're there. It's not as no, it's it's very quiet. In fact, my cab machine is probably a little more noisy than the 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 flat lap. Um, it, yeah. But yeah, the frequency drive on the on the motor is what's making the high pitch you'll, singing. You'll have that, but it was like it was almost like a piece because you talk, it would go down, and then that noise, whatever that yeah. uh, a variable audio i think we're at a frequency that was like man it was louder than it like because i've never heard it like that so for people that are listening and, it don't sound like that when you're actually using it it's and, there's something and, and about that with the camera no, normally i don't even hear it because i got the music up a lot louder i turned my music down a lot a lot quieter so i could record and but yeah, yeah i don't i got the, sometimes rocking sometimes i'm mellow whatever it's just whatever you, you feel like now so, i noticed that one thing i, I learned go ahead sorry john Cornelia asked a question about uh, how much water is enough and why using WD-40. Well, okay, the WD-40 is just to preserve the laps. If you let it sit with water or something on, it's going to rest on you. So I, I wipe it off and put a little WD-40 on it, and it, it doesn't get rusty. And it's, it's easy. It's a quick step to do when you're done for the day. And just it maintenance. Yeah. It's, it's keeping the machine top notch. Water. Um, that depends. Water depends on, you don't want too much water because then you're creating a lot of spray and that that's not good. And if you've got too much water, you, 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 your, your piece starts to hydroplane and wow. you won't cut. So you, you want to have that cut. You'll get the fill of it when you start doing that. I typically get my, my nozzles close to the lap as I can get it. And what I want when I, 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 I want it to just be a steady stream from about a quarter inch uh, above the lap. I want a steady stream. I don't like it to drop. I, I found that if you, if you let it drop six inches onto the lap, it splatters. And so mm -hmm. I like to get it down as close to the lap as possible and then just get a steady stream of water as little as possible. And that's usually enough, just that little steady stream of water, not a drip. And you you don't use that center hole. So you bring it from the outside because you can well, bring from the center too. Yes, you, you do have a center hole and, and I don't use it um, mm -hmm. right now. If I get a if I get a centering bit or so I can cut bevels and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I will use that centering hole to be able to flood, mm -hmm. flood water to the disc. You can yeah. use it, but I haven't, I haven't, used it um it just it would be a it, i actually may try it because i uh just to see if it, it works better to control i like to be able to see the flow and i guess if if i'm using that centering hole i'm not going to be able to see the flow i'll just have to feel you know how much water is coming out right right just so to answer a couple i'm going to answer a couple of questions for people so okay. the way that flat lap works is it's a metal disc the nickel plated flat lap has a magnet on the back so it sticks to the disc so some people are asking about the a centerpiece you can run a flat lap that has no center hole in it um and and some laps didn't have water that could come through the center shaft our laps all have the ability to flow water through the center of because it's got a a basically road joining joint uh, in there. So we're injecting water comes through the center of the flat lap and it's a stainless steel shaft and then that flows out. 
Um, then there's two sprayers that come up top. You're just using one in this particular case. Yes. From yep. the top. Um, but that's at what holds that lap on there. So yeah, you don't um, need a nut on it. The, the magnet is extremely strong. Yeah, I, I think I posted a part of the video on how to get that lap off. I have to take a paint scraper and actually physically wedge it in between the di the, the lap and the disc to get it to, to break loose. And then yeah, once you, you got to break that thing, uh, you can yeah, put it upside it's, it's, down, you can do anything. It's not going to come it, off. It sucked on there tight, and you have a hard time. That's a heavy off. duty 3M magnet. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the 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 resin lap, the resin laps, they come off. You can take them off easily by hand. So yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple other things. So uh, Tony, uh, Tori on Facebook was saying, I have a flat lap machine. I don't want. I don't know what sandpaper to get, as there's no hole to place a sandpaper down. So so Tori. Part of the thing is, um, yeah, for flat lapping, generally you want to have some water in there for certainly from a health reason, because you're going to be, you don't want silic, you don't want dust in the air. Um, um, so that's part of why people put water on a lap. And you could get, if it's a smaller lap, if you're an eight or 10 inch lap, you can get smaller laps as well. We sell all the way down to six inch lap. However, and the laps we have in stock don't have magnets on the back. So it just depends on your particular uh, flat lap machine, but you can call us. We're happy to help figure out what will work to get you up and going on that. Or, or if you're on Facebook, just message me on Facebook, send me pictures of your flat lap and, and I'll tell you what, what you can use on it. Right, great, great. And then Bruce, uh, Bruce, you had a question. How do you get the die crow in the cube? We're going to get to that. Um, and then Gary said, there's no lap nut for that size lap. Yeah, Gary, it's the magnet. I mean, you don't need anything in the center. It's and 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 Brett, uh, Bart was just he likes his centered. I'm actually when I put a lap on, I'm much less. I just stick it on. I go. Um, what's your thing around why you're like making that even? I mean, you just don't like to see it going a little bit because you want to well, make sure you don't get any of that, any of that kind of slightly off center. The reason, the reason that it, it, if you don't have it completely centered, it, it'll wobble. You'll, you'll get uh -huh. a little bit of wobble in the machine. So if you center it and that, and if I center it and then, cause there's a, there's probably, oh, not, not very much, probably a 30 second of an inch, maybe even less than that around yep. The space of the hub and so that that disc can be uh off center just a little bit and when you get as much mass as that disc has yeah. it can wobble I see. so yeah. and, it, and it it's a little bit of vibration in the machine it's not bad i mean i could live with it i don't have that problem at all with the with the resin laps i just right. drop them on though well they're they're but, light i mean they're a lot lighter yeah they're they're a lot lighter yes yeah okay that's great yeah this machine uh i think gary just asked a question Eric, uh, what Eric, is the asked, Eric asked a question that because the post on on the website doesn't show the variable speed. It's an old picture. All of our they're laps, all variable speed. All of our laps are variable speed. Um, uh, I think really that's uh, a thing for Mark. Our get some updated pictures on these on the website, please, and the description. Right. Right. Uh, and Gary, that's a 24 inch machine that uh, Bart has. We have an 18 inch as well. Uh, I have an 18 that I use at this at our studio. Let's uh, let's roll to the next video. Okay, so I've uh, gone through my uh, 220 grit, and now I'm on the or no, this is this is 220 grit right here. I've gone through the 500 grit, and now I'm on my resin 220. And then uh, I'll, I'll run the steps, all the pieces that I've got on this 220, and then um, change the, the disc over to 600. So here's, let's see, where we're at with this. Again. As much as the as much of the disc as possible, and then turn 180 degrees. You have a good hold of it. Now 180 degrees or 90 degrees, and just try to keep even pressure. Speed. Um, 
right now the speed I've got on here is 21. That's not RPM, but that's just where the frequency converter is. Um, I like to go not too fast with it because it throws the water off the disc. I like to keep a little water on the disc. So when I get a side, I take a towel and dry it. And then you can look to see if there's any sc previous scratches from the previous polishing. Another key, key thing on this is having lots and lots of light. I mean, I've got my little drop light here, but I've also got an overhead light. I don't think you could ever have enough light on your subject when, when you're doing, doing this stuff. When I get to going on this, I'm polishing flat sides so I can take them down and I, I, uh, I glue all the glass in my house, do all my glue, glue ups down there, and then I bring them up to my shop and, and polish up here in the shop. But uh, every piece of glass in there has been cut, polished, and then I'll cut it again and polish it and the sides and add more glass. So it's, it's, a, it's a long process, but in my opinion, it's well worth it especially when you get into the final polishing and, and start shaping the, the piece a little bit. And I do the same thing with stone. Um, when, when I've actually, I'll take a block like this, cut it, fit it to the stone, and then I start rough grinding and shaping the whole thing and polishing the stone piece. So I'll stop here and uh, bring up the next disc. So when you're in that process, so are you just, what grits are you going through with the resin lap? Um, I have with the resin laps, I have 220, um, 600 and 1200 okay. on the resin laps. And that's, that's the process. And you can buy different laps or resin laps to you know, they're different, but they're just, they're expensive. And so mm -hmm. I've, I've, I'm where I can work with, so I have to spend a little bit more time between on my laps, just because I'm having to kind of skip a, a, a grit in between some of my laps, but that's what I use. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one we've got is, let's go to the, this is actually that short clip. Is it the next clip? Uh, run the next clip, Joanna. Okay, so here's the cube that I've cut it now into pieces and I've just touched the one side. So I've got my slabs. Um, these are pieces that I will put into the egg. I will have to polish all, all sides. So this side, this side, this side, this side, this side, and this side. But that's, that's what it will look like getting to be when I make my slabs to put inside the egg. Or you can use slabs like this to put inside a cabbage on or what have you, whatever you want to do it. You come up with your own ideas and, and there's tons of ideas out there. So that's what you do. So you're you're making blocks, cutting the blocks, uh, re-epoxying together, and polishing yeah. each step. And so you're getting, you know, optically pure going through there. So it really all reflects the light. Right. And I, and I think we have the video of, of me gluing a, a block together, yeah. uh, the, the whole process of gluing the block together uh, on that. Yeah. But yes, you, you glue them and, and then you cut them up. The more you cut them up, the more fire that comes out of them, the more they, they pop. And, yeah, because that light, you've had some and like you just turn it, it's like boom, it's like light yeah, going everywhere. The, the refraction is just, it starts going crazy. The more you so cut them, the respect. more you so one of the things that I was thinking that people may not know is before you like, so you cut up a cube and then you're going to uh, add, add more pieces to it and re-laminate it. Do you have to have all those faces polished before you glue it? Um, yes, you, you want to polish them because if you don't, you have to polish them. You, you'll get, you, when you look at the piece that's cut, that's what it's going to look like. The glue will hide some scratches, but if you don't polish it, 
and you glue it together, you're going to see those scratches. So you've got to get the scratches all the way up. You don't particularly have to go to 100% cerium, uh, felt pad and cerium, but you you should go at least to 1200 grit mm -hmm. and, and then polish. The glue will hide some of those scratches, but you don't have to hide them uh, all. You, like I say, just don't, but you do have to polish. Otherwise your piece won't look, you won't, it won't shine. Besides when you start polishing them, that's the fun part. When those colors start coming out and and, and and you see the reflect the refraction going on that's what's fun so yeah but you, well, it's a process it's a long long process i mean my pieces will take me 20 hours sometimes to make one or or longer to make a piece mm -hmm. um so yeah it's a it's a long process well they're ex but fun. exquisite pieces well a couple of questions we had here uh jp was asking are all laps, including resin, are diamond impregnated. Yeah, the resin laps are diamond impregnated. The felt, uh, synthetic felt lap that you'll see in a later video is just a synthetic felt, and that's cerium oxide polish powder used on that, which Bart will go through. But these other laps, both the nickel-plated diamond laps are essentially diamond that's coated with nickel that's an electroplated onto a disc. Um, and so that's diamond. So all this cutting is diamond, which is an important step because with diamond, different than if people have cut with silicon carbide or grit, you can't is easily fake steps. Like some people say, well, I don't want to buy that and they want to jump a step. You're going to be working. If you go from a six, a 500 to, or like from a, a 500 to like a 1200 and don't do anything. What's your, what's your steps again? Because on your um, sequences it's, it's 325 on, on the resin it's 220 no, on, on your on your on your flat laps you go 325 and 500 right uh 325 and 500 on the on the on the uh nickel plated and then but if you went from 500 nickel plated to 1200 resin <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna work so yeah. well exactly yeah you you you'll have scratches like crazy so right you got, and you diamond got buy, is gonna just cut like a cab it's just like a cab machine. You got to buff buff all the scratches out from the previous will before you move to the next will. Right. right. So. Right. Right. Um, uh, Steve had a question. Is the glass expensive? Dichro glass is yeah. It's it's kind of expensive. You're talking per square inch, four or five dollars per square inch, uh, roughly. Um, a disc, this is a quarter round disc that I've got right here. These discs, quarter round discs are, um, for, not a quarter round, but a full disc is about $150 mm -hmm. for a full disc. Um, I will be selling kits and my friend, Stephen, um, uh, Stephen McCusnick, like I said, I probably just messed his name up, but he's the Dicor glass man and he also sells kits. He sell, sold me a kit and he'll, yeah. he's, he sells kits uh, so you can hit him up on Instagram and he, and he will get you a kit. Yeah. But if you compare that to buying, you know, high end agate, I mean, it's, that's not yeah, that exactly. it's not dramatic. You, yeah. you, you, you can, you can spend the, you know, four or $500 for an agate. I know exactly. that. So exactly. Uh, and there you're, you're, you know, you're not necessarily building, well, you could build, you know, blocks this big and that, but I mean, if you're integrating it into like a pendant or things right. like that, it's not like huge volume. Um, uh, Bob A from YouTube says, any chance to get C8 in variable speed? And Eric Paul is asking the same question. Um, that's kind of on, on John's thinking. I knew people were going to ask that question. So. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well, and I want to do it. I, I just, it's one of my projects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the thickness from Ricky saying, what's the thickness of the glass when you start to epoxy it? Um, I, I buy sheet glass and it, and, and this is a, a key thing too. There's two types of glass you can buy. You can buy window glass or you can buy starfire glass. Mm. Starfire glass is low iron glass and it's ultra clear window glass is um, everyday glass that you can buy. You can buy a piece of Home Depot. I started buying Home Depot glass, glass from Home Depot, just little window panes that you could buy a glass, cut it and glue it. But it gives you a green tint 
to the glass when you turn it on the side, on the sides. And it works fine. A lot of my first pieces were built with window glass before I had some uh, Starfire, but now I use Starfire on 90% of everything. The thickness you start out with, you know, you can, you can start out, with, it depends on if you're wanting to build the, the piece up to make a thicker piece, but you can start out with 16th inch, 332nd, quarter inch, all the way up to half inch, one inch. You can even get even bigger uh, lead lead crystal and start using lead crystal to to do the same thing. Okay, yeah. Um, um, uh, oh, and then Gary's asking, are you using glues like Hextall? And I think you're going to cover both UV yeah. activated and I know and um, both. Yes, I use I use Hextall for. I'll tell you about Hextel. Hextel is is the best that you can use for gluing glass together. Um, it it's strong. It polishes well, but it's expensive, and it takes four days to cure. So you have to build your piece, glue it together, and you have to tape it because when you start taping, and, and if you don't have it taped together and held together tightly, it starts floating and moving away, and and um, <laughs> you'll end up with a piece when it's cured that's shifted on you. So you have to mm -hmm. tape it together and hold it in place while it's gluing. Mm -hmm. um, UV glue. UV is what I show in building. I, the, we're showing building a block here um, in this series. And, and I use UV glue. It's great to learn. It's not as expensive. It's fast. You, you, you can glue a block up in an evening uh, let it cure overnight in a UV light box and you're ready to cut it the next day. It, it's, it's super quick. You, you hit it with a UV flashlight and, and the pieces that right. you're gluing together are glued together within 30 seconds. Right. And then how, how on that, I mean, Hextall is really great performance for UV resistance and natural UV light. How is the, yes. uh, the UV epoxies compared to that? Like, do you see yellowing on that? Cause the catalyzation I, is the, definitely faster. It, well, I've only been doing it three and a half years. Well, glass, I've only been doing glass for two years. Right. And I, ha I don't have enough experience to know if it's yellow. I've had some pieces sitting in my windows at home. There's mm -hmm. nothing, nothing has happened to them at all. Okay. So I don't know exactly how long the UV glue will eventually hold up. Have you uh, ever tried other epoxies that were not successful? Um, I have. In fact, I... I I had a problem, and I talk about this in one of the videos too. Is I had a problem with with um, gluing stone and glass together, and what I found is sometimes when you get a piece of stone that's been cut with an oil saw, with oil as oil slab, sometimes that oil is a little bit impregnated into the stone, and and so it it doesn't adhere. So with the UV glue, and so I've used um, I've used actually just a two part epoxy. Mm -hmm. uh, a good two part like uh, what E600 epoxy and different epoxies to do that. But then Hextel is still the best at doing that because getting it to uh, glue to the stone works really good. Mm -hmm. the, the UV works on gluing the stones too. If you can get light through whatever you're gluing, you have to be able to shine the light through the glass to, to hit the stone for the UV to cure. Right, right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let's see if any other questions here. Any noticeable differences between borosilicate dichroic and soft glass dichroic besides the price? Uh, the boro is what I use. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it's hard, extremely hard, especially when cutting. Um, but you can cut it. It's, it I, I show that in a video too. It may be next week when we're showing that. But you can cut it and um, it just is and it polishes like like stone and, and all the glass is polishing like stone it's like it polishes kind of like obsidian mm -hmm. uh you know it is obsidian is glass and so it all polishes the same i do find a difference when you're you've got to be careful when you're polishing glass and stone because sometimes stone's softer than the glass so and or mm -hmm. vice versa so you could get undercutting in that particular yep, case exactly so you got to be right. careful and a lot of times um when i'm polishing i can i can control my polishing stone and glass. So sometimes I'll polish those two pieces on a bowl wheel where I can focus my polishing on 
right on the glass and not touching the stone. So I, I'm kind of keeping away from the stone as much as possible and not having to wear the stone down. Right. So that's something that that's, you do find that the, you'll have undercutting happening. Right. And then um, we're going to get to clamping in just a minute. Let's let's roll the let's roll the next video here, Joe. I'm going to show you a few tricks, a few things that I've learned in in gluing up um, a block, glass block, dichroic glass blocks that you can use for your projects um, like I use in my projects to do glass cubes. Um, this will be a basic glass cube that you can build and and do and and um, use it however you want. But I'm going to show you the basics. I've got my glass all cut into the sizes that I need right now. And I'll uh, show you the basic process of gluing it. Now I'll be gluing this with UV glue. Um, I also use, most of the time I use uh, Hextel but the cure time takes a lot longer, but for, you know, a beginner and to, to play around and experiment, it, I, I suggest that you use the, the UV uh, glue. So let me get started. I'll show you how I clean the glass and then how I uh, go ahead and do my glue ups. I, I, to make sure you got your glass clean, I've got these other blocks here cleaned out. Um, I take and what I've got is some uh, basic whiting compound it's just white powder and I used a denatured alcohol in a little cup mix it and so it's just a, a slurry get a little on my finger and then I rub that uh, piece of glass and you can hear and you can feel that glass and that cleans it flip it over do it and then I take a clean lint-free cloth and I wipe it clean. And wipe the wash, you'll get the whiting. The whiting's gonna be on the edges and you wanna wipe those edges too because it will, um, that it'll, it'll migrate to the, the edge that you're gluing together. And then use, I use canned air to clean it off. And like I say, I've got all my other pieces here already glued together or cleaned. And so I will use my UV to glue. Um, KOA um, 300 UV glue is the best for as far as UV glues go. It's kind of expensive, but um, when I'm gluing, I, I, I make an X pattern across the, the, the glass with my glue. And then I use these pieces. These are, uh, I don't know if you can see it. This is, this has got diachroic lines cut. These are, um, I think they make these things for laser uh, disc players and um, projectors. But you can see that there's lines in there, diachroic lines in there. Uh, not much color, but it's it's something I use. You can buy these off of of, of eBay. Uh, many sellers sell them out there. So, but when you're lowering that on, double check, make sure I've got that dust foot free and clean. You lower it down super slowly. The slower the better. And I like to maybe contact one side of the glass and then slowly lower it down. That's going to create less bubbles in your glass. And then I like to use something that you can put pressure on that glass and wiggle it, just wiggle it slightly back and forth. And that's going to squeeze any bubbles out to the edges. You don't want them bubbles inside your, your piece. And then Convoy C8 UV flashlight. And I just hit that for 
oh, 15, 20 seconds. And that sets that piece up, not 100% cure, but pretty close. So that one's ready. And now I'm ready to go to the next piece. Here's a piece of Dicro, purple, and it reflects kind of a blue till color. So I'll, I'll put my glue down again on this in the X pattern. Again, make sure it's clean. Now you, with Dicro, you've got two sides. You got a Dicro side and a glass slide side. And it depends on how you're doing. It takes, takes some thinking about how you want to put that piece down. Dicro side down or Dicro side up. Um, just depends on what you're doing and what application you're putting it in. Slowly again down. It's the bubbles out. Most of the time you can see the bubbles work out. Then you want to make sure your edges are aligned as much as possible. It's not critical because you're going to be grinding and polishing after you're done. And again, hit it with the UV glue. So I'll hit this with UV and, and I'll continue to build this block up and I'll show you what the finished product looks like once I'm done. So how many layers is, do you typically build at one time with the UV? That, that to, to make a block, that one probably has about 10 layers to make a, a, like a one inch block. It just depends on how big, of, how big you're gonna cut your squares and how big you're gonna cut your dichro. So mm. you just wanna, you wanna start off with a square, you can make a rectangle block. It, it's just however many layers you wanna put in there, the more color you're gonna get. You can also add too much because the dichro can, as you, it starts hiding the transparency, the more dichro you add, it you, becomes less transparent. So you, you gotta, it's kind of a thinking game. You kind of think about what it's gonna, what, you're, what it's gonna look like when it's finished. And you're also going to cut it up. So you want to be able to glue the block and then cut it up and, and do that. Yeah. Um, uh, I noticed that, and Gary just asked this question as well. Uh, the white powder, what is the white powder that you're using? It, it's called whiting. And it, I don't know if it's actually like a baking soda, but it's, it's actually a cleaning powder. You can buy it from your, uh, you can buy it from your glass shops that mm -hmm. do uh, stained glass. Or, or that kind of stuff, but it's just it's a powder and you mix it. You can also use, if you don't have the whiting, and I used it for quite a while, is, is use cerium oxide. Cerium mm. oxide works also. So you take your cerium oxide and your alcohol and you just mix it to a slurry and mix it on your finger. And, and I use it, <laughs> I clean it off my finger and wipe it clean. You can't use, don't use, try to use just straight alcohol because alcohol will leave a smear, it leaves a film. So you have to use the cerium and the alcohol together and wipe it clean. Mm -hmm. So and it, and it, the, you, have, you make sure that the dust is gone because that's why I blow it with the air can. Right, right, right. Now, is it different from the UV? How many layers you can do versus using a, like a longer cure time like Hextal? Um, no, it's, it, it doesn't matter. The UV is going to cure when I, and I, I don't know if I showed it on the thing, but I have a light box that I cure my you pieces did. in and it, uh, that light box, I let, I let my UV pieces sit and cure in that light box overnight. Mm -hmm. And that bathes the, the piece in UV light all night long. And, or, you know, just two or three hours would be sufficient to do that, but it just gives it like the UV. Hextol, you don't have to worry about UV light. It, you just have to, to wait the time for it to cure. Right, right, right. So um, uh, Dan had a question. So when you're gluing, do you do you ever use clamping like to clamp? You talked about pieces moving, like clamping the pieces, or is that something that is just a bit too fragile? And it, no, you could clamp, but I use tape, masking mm -hmm. tape. Uh, some people use some of the videos I've watched where people are gluing glass blocks together. They use the uh, nylon impregnated impregnated tape but masking tape works great for me i I'll, i some of the videos i've got I, I think i i um on the uv you don't have to clamp it but on hexel you have to you have to hold it in place and i use i use the tape to do that right and wax paper wax paper just keeps it 
keeps it from sticking to anything else. So I use the wax paper, put the wax paper down and glue everything mm -hmm. on wax paper because it just makes it separation. The glues don't stick to the wax paper. And you do the same also on the UV? Same? Yes, on the UV, both yeah, UV and Hextel. Okay. So yeah. There was a question that JP had, which is kind of funny. I don't see blood and butchering going on. Do the glass edges <laughs> not cut? Or are there tricks to handle that? I don't know. See that right there? There you go, JP. <laughs> there is some butchering going on. <laughs> and there's a there's a piece right here and a piece here. Yeah. It, it happens. That's yeah. from my thumb on the disc. Okay. The thing that works nice is I've, and I should have done it, I, I have some of the uh, elastic bandage that you can wrap. That, yep. and put that on my fingertips and if i'm running on the lap i i use that but i, I didn't do it and i rubbed you get blood there's blood sweat and tears in this world Dan, dan's trying to keep himself from fainting right now he's just sending me oh my god i'm trying not to faint <laughs> dan you've done all kinds of stuff I, I bet you've done it too so um so we're we're at seven o'clock what's that let me just look at where we're at i mean at eight o'clock i want to see where we're at on the videos here gluing you know what um are we halfway why don't we I think we're actually a good stopping plate here because then we'll go into next week with the the glass lamination and curing with the star the star fire glass that you'll talk about, yes. and then we're getting to all the grinding and polishing process there. Yes. So, um, uh, so this gives you guys all you can gives you you can start seeing there is a process for tackling this. This is first time for me. I've always been fascinated with this. I've never known how it's been done. So I'm super stoked because I'm like, I want to do that um, and, uh, and, and get glass. And I assume, John, that's also something like, is that kind of glass? Can we get that in quantity? What's that? Like that kind of glass. I mean, where's it all made? Uh, it made? You know, uh, a lot of it uh, is. Uh, there's some in China, I'm sure over in China. I haven't heard about China, but I know there's a couple of places here in the yeah. States that are making it, but it's, it's kind of rare. It's, it's, and it's hard yeah. to get. Yeah, it's made in in uh, in basically uh, vacuum furnaces, kind of yep. like early furnaces that were used for semiconductor stuff. That a lot of those got converted to making dichroic. Oh, interesting! Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So, so uh, one of the things, well, you know, tonight is if you like this and if you're really getting value, there's two things that we ask. One, um, you know, follow. Uh, Bart, do we have a thing up on, on Bart's? Can you guys put up the, the social thing for Bart? So like follow Bart, watch what he's doing because he's putting stuff up on Instagram. Um, uh, so there's Bart's up on the Instagram um, right there. Go backwards. Um, so definitely follow him on Instagram. Uh, I think you're more of an Instagram guy. You're not as much Facebook, right? I think you and I talked about that. Um, and I, I both. I do a, a Facebook, but my stuff, all my pieces I post on Instagram. I, it's yeah. not a social thing, but it, it's just my stuff that I put on Instagram. My I do Facebook and and a lot of uh, that's where people talk to me mostly is from Facebook. Right, right, right. So you then you you can find then you can find him over on Facebook, and then yep. also um, for for us, like if you're liking these kinds of webinars, if you've not given us a review give us a five-star review. We love reviews. It motivates the whole team because we're like doing a lot of extra work to get these things out. So you can click the link that's in the chat, leave us a, a five-star review saying, hey, I love what I'm learning or whatever you want to say there. We really are committed to bringing you new innovative things that you can do to really expand the range of artistic expression you have in the lapidary arts. And that's really our mission to do that. Um, and also we ask that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. This video will be going up on YouTube. And so there's a link in the chat. You can also subscribe right here. Um, and I think for next week, Bart, do you think we could put together a, maybe a simple, like what are the basic tools that are needed for somebody to get started? And I can work with that offline just so people are like, okay, what's the recipe for me to start integrating this into my lapidary work so they know the entry point. Because sometimes it can seem overwhelming, but if you boil it down, there may be a, a simple, you know, A, B, C levels to get actually started. Um, and yeah. I, I love, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I, we, the, the videos that we have to show will show a lot of that stuff um, that's needed and, um, it, we can we'll talk about all that that we can do next week. Sounds great. Great, great.
So everybody, thank you for joining us here. Bart, you just completely thank rocked you. the house with your videos. It was great. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, and we'll see you all next week, 7 p.m., same place. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you here and I uh, look forward to talking to you all. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Bye. Bye-bye.